talk about Letitia. First, let's start off with her in this last episode. Okay, so she said she was going to storm down to the, what is he, like a paralegal? She said she's going to go to the paralegal's office and pretty much go off because she feels like she got screwed because she gave the man $1,000, then turned around and found out that Keith likely won't be getting out of prison early. And this is why she paid the man, because he promised her he would be able to take care of that. And so she goes down there, and she meets up with him. And one of the first things she says to him is, first of all, you did not tell me that you had been to federal prison before. And he's like, I didn't think it was relevant. And she's like, well, that's something you need to tell me, which I really don't feel like Letitia had much room to talk with that one because she's done interviews in the past where she was asked if all her clients know about her criminal history. And she even admitted that she does not tell every single person, but the people who ask about it, she has no problem opening up about it. And she's like, yeah, you did not tell me about your criminal history. And two, it looks like Keith isn't even going to get out because I called up to the prison and he's like okay well here's the deal he's like you don't have to worry about nothing because I went and I went through all of Keith's paperwork and I found quite a bit of errors to where his whole case will be thrown out and he'll get an expungement which will pretty much he'll get out of prison and the case will be dismissed and I'm not really buying that I mean there's people that do go through paperwork and find errors and stuff but here's the thing I had no idea Keith has been in prison as long as he has he she did an interview the other day and she was asked how long he's been in prison and I guess her daughters don't even know how long he's been in prison because when she was asked this she had to ask her daughters to go upstairs and her daughters went upstairs and she's like yeah he's been in prison I think she said 11 years it was either 11 or 13 years but that is a long time and I feel like if they were errors and his paperwork they would have figured that out a long time ago I don't know why Letitia was being so quiet all of a sudden because if I was her I would want to know what errors like before you waste any more of my time point out what errors you're talking about and why you think this qualifies for an expungement but she's just sitting there rolling her eyes to everything he was saying and I feel like the way Letitia was looking at her paralegal is how a lot of us look at Letitia when she speaks I knew Keith wasn't getting out of prison when this paralegal said he went through Keith's documents with a fine tooth comb. And she did not sound like she was very confident whatsoever. And she said she found out about this man, I guess from somebody Keith was in prison with. And this man, I guess, helped him out. So he ended up giving a good referral to Keith and Keith told Letitia about him. She trusted Keith's word and just went and contacted this man and dropped a thousand dollars. But this is how I feel. I feel like this paralegal is Letitia's karma. He's giving her a taste of her own medicine because we keep hearing about all these lawsuits and people she hasn't paid. At this point, I think she's like a sociopath or something because like how do you not have empathy and feel bad when you don't pay people or screw people out of their hard-earned money and now we're seeing it happen to her. When you're the one always putting people through things, you don't really understand how it feels until it happens to you and you get a taste of your own medicine and I feel like that's what Letitia is experiencing and even in her confessional when she's talking about the parent legal she couldn't even keep eye contact because I feel like in that moment she was feeling a little bit of guilt for what she has put other people through then Letitia was talking about how she just feels like everything is going wrong in her life she just had the worst luck she says with her business she has to pay everyone and then just take the scraps for herself and she admitted in an interview the other day that her business hasn't been doing that good lately 
and she was kind of getting emotional at the time so the producers took the perfect opportunity to ask Letitia well since you're talking about your business how is that going because you know that's something that she loved talking about last season and this season we really haven't heard much about it except seeing her like at her office in the very first episode and she didn't want to talk about it she said look can we go ahead and cut she says i'm not talking about that and she kind of got an attitude with the producers and i knew at that point we aren't going to hear about any of these lawsuits any of these legal troubles the evictions i feel like Letitia is not going to open up about any of that and she said in an interview that she's refusing to talk about these things because she's going to save it all for her book that she has coming out okay so we're like what four five episodes in now and the new season starts in October so we probably got like maybe six seven tops episodes left and it's like so what are we gonna have with Letitia for the rest of the season if Keith's not getting out like really I, if she's not gonna talk about anything is it just gonna be her and Keith on the phone I just don't get it are they gonna cut her storyline short like I really didn't see much with her when they show the trailer for the rest of the season so I have no idea what they're gonna do there but I think this is like one of the first cast members we've seen go from love during to love after and then she'll probably be going back on Love After Lockup again when he finally does get out. Letitia has been on a rampage today. She ran into Colleen, the girl she allegedly stole $11,000 from her cleaning business and never did any accounting services. Well, she ran into Colleen at her daughter's school because I guess their daughters both go to the same school. After Colleen dropped her daughter off this morning, she looked behind her and noticed Letitia was right behind her in front of the school. So Colleen got out of her car, took a little video of her and called her a fraud and Letitia just sat there all frozen up and didn't say anything. And then after that, it seemed like Letitia was on a rampage. She tried to make a post accusing Colleen of having the n-word come out of her mouth and then Colleen responded and said look this is complete bs and as she does try to post messages pretending they're from me all you have to do is look and see if it has a check mark because i'm verified and she's like look do your research i did not leave any hateful messages and then after that happened next thing you know colleen's cleaning business starts getting hit with all these negative reviews she gets one review from an adory which is a one-star review and then she gets another review from a michael b hernandez which is somebody who just reshared Letitia's post where she was claiming that colleen called her the n-word and was yelling at her at her daughter's school and Letitia ended up liking these negative reviews i can't say that these reviews are from Letitia, but you can look at what i've shown you and come up with your own conclusion but say she was involved in having a hand or you know encouraging these negative reviews and i did speak with colleen and colleen said that she has not had anybody by these names or email addresses do business with her so these are people leaving reviews off business that they have not received and just pretty much is trying to damage her reputation is what it looks like and say what Colleen is thinking is the truth, then Letitia does have something to do with these negative reviews. That's really foul to go after someone's business when they've just done nothing but just work their butt off and have an honest living. I understand where Colleen's coming from because if I had someone steal $11,000 from me, I would make sure that I would do everything in my power to make sure someone else does not fall victim to that same person. And that's exactly what Colleen's doing. She's trying to warn people, all the locals, because at this time, Letitia is still in business. And there's been numerous people that have used her business and been completely screwed over. Word on the street, the reason Letitia's 
hair has been looking a hot mess this season is because she screwed over her hairdresser she had last year. She had a friend she borrowed $5,000 from and never paid back. And she had to sit there and put a lawsuit against Letitia. She screwed like Colleen over for $11,000. She stole two years worth of tax money from a client by claiming, oh, just pay me and I'll pay your money to the IRS. But instead she pocketed it. Then you want to get mad when people call you out and the walls are starting to close in all around you. And I just don't get it how she can continue to still do that. It's like makes it so hard for me to have empathy for Letitia because it's clearly obvious she doesn't have empathy for anyone else. And Starcasm actually revealed, and I actually remember touching on this in one of my older videos, that Letitia got numerous PPP loans back when they were doing the PPP loans. She got, I think it was like $20,000 for her box tax and accounting service. And then she suddenly came up with a travel agency and suddenly came up with a like credit boss business. And she got over $70,000 in PPP loans for this credit boss business, over $20,000 for her box t boss tax and accounting. And then she got even more money for another business she claimed she had, even though we haven't heard about any of these businesses, but the boss tax and accounting one. And I remember looking into this back in the day and the only information I could find about these businesses were Instagram pages that were made right when she applied for the PPP loans. And after she was granted the PPP loan, she was never active on them again. And then the I guess the PPP loans were paid back and they ended up closing her case because she wasn't able to provide financials the next year. From what it looks like, it looks like she went from having one business to suddenly three businesses once they started giving those PPP loans out. You know, everybody started having multiple businesses once they started doing those, especially Letitia. And I can't say 100% at it's legit or not those businesses i'm just saying what i've seen so far and after she got over seventy thousand dollars for that credit boss business which was conveniently at the same location as her boss tax and accounting business she claimed she had seven employees for this credit boss business and she turned around and three months later she went and put forty thousand dollars down on a rent to own house. And that's a house she was later evicted from. It was like a $400,000 house. So it sounds like she put about 10% down. And she's super heartbroken after she lost that place saying, oh, I put all this money into it. Okay, let me make a quick correction. I just went back over the Starcasm article and she actually got two PPP loans. So she got over $20,000 for her boss tax and accounting. And after she was approved for that, Two months later, she decided to apply for a new business, the Credit Boss business, and she was granted over $78,000. So she got over uh, almost $100,000 from those two PPP loans. Okay, so just a few minutes ago, we were talking about how Letitia was trying to act like Colleen called her like, some kind of name talking about her skin color or something and now Letitia has posted this acting like this is from Colleen and I feel like she's cutting off the name suddenly because Colleen pointed out look I'm verified so she's like oh crap it's gonna be hard to make up a fake profile and pretend I'm like Colleen if this is from Colleen then where's Colleen's name like just the cut out part why would you show everything else but you wouldn't show her name Let's get a screen recording of this message, Letitia. I want to see you get a screen recording, open up this message, and then I want to see you click on the profile picture from who the message is from. Those are the full receipts I want to see. Colleen does not talk like this, and I'll go out of my way and say that I do not buy one bit that this is allegedly from Colleen. Letitia has Colleen blocked on every social media platform, and the fact that it's cut off like this, it looks like she literally sent a text message to herself and screenshot it. So it says, you fraud, 
A-S-S B-I-T-C-H you think your full blood N-I-G-G-E-R children can go to school with my children I'll make sure to get your kids kicked out or your kids will be hit by a car and will have to attend school from home so let's just say you will not silence me like Tisha you fraud you scammer if the police won't side with me then the white community will scammer Le- this literally looks like a text message Letitia sent herself and cut off so you can't see it's from her number because why isn't Colleen's name on there? I've had people in the past let me tea and be like, hey, you can share messages, but please cut out my name because I want to stay anonymous. I don't want to deal with any harassment or backlash. And that's understandable. But here's the thing. She's coming out and claiming that this is from Colleen. Then she's going into the comments and saying Colleen's full name and the name of her business so she can try to direct people to send their anger to her. And if you're willing to name drop her in the comments, then why are you cutting out her name in the messages? It just doesn't make much sense. And like I said, I think it's because Colleen's verified. I don't know. Maybe some people actually buy it, but I'm not buying it one bit. Especially with the fact that Colleen has a lawsuit against Letitia right now. Why the hell would Colleen threaten Letitia and her kids if she's trying to win a lawsuit? That doesn't even make any sense whatsoever. So I'm not buying it until I see the full screen recording and see her click on that profile. Because one thing Letitia likes to do is she likes to leave out the full story and just pick and choose from whatever makes her look like the victim as much as possible. When in reality, she's the villain. I had a lot of people messaging me what Letitia was saying about me, saying, oh my God, you gotta respond. So this is all I'm gonna say. Letitia has been throwing some shade because there is a millionaire comedian on Instagram offering to pay single moms rent. And I am a single mom. I have two kids. I've been a single mom for a little over a month. I have enough to pay my rent because I don't live beyond my means. But if a millionaire is going to offer to pay a single mother's rent and I'm someone who is a lower middle class person, yes, I'm going to try it. If you're going to pay my rent, I'm going to take it. Hell yeah, sign me up. If all I have to do is leave a comment to enter your little giveaway to possibly win the money, then yes, sign me up. And that's exactly what I did. Letitia wanted to grasp at straws and she was on a rampage so she decided to bring that up today. All I got to say about that is maybe you should enter the giveaway to Letitia because maybe you want to be getting evicted every single six months from your business or your home. After hearing about these PPP loans, it makes me just think that her whole lifestyle is a fraud. It seems like she almost got this jump start from these PPP loans. Next thing you know, she gets a house and then she loses the house because she couldn't afford it because she decided to get a $400,000 house. Just live within your means. If her rent was half of that or her house was half the size of that, then I think she wouldn't have to worry about getting over on people all the time or trying to figure out her next come up so she can keep this whole lifestyle going. If you build the foundation of your business on being deceitful and stepping on people's toes, it's not going to last. And if she just had a place that was within her means, then she could have a peace of mind. And that is much more valuable than being in a place with all this materialistic stuff that you can't even afford long term. But that is it for this video guys. Let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.